General, listen. Mandrake, I can't hear myself think. Turn that racket down. Just, just listen for a second. Do you know what that is? The live radio station that's playing right now. So do you know what that means? It means that this whole thing was just a test. That the Pentagon was just testing our readiness to see if we were prepared for things. It's gone a little bit too far this time because in 20 minutes, our missiles are gonna be over the Korean airspace. Captain, I thought I issued instructions for all cell phones on this base to be impounded. Yes, sir, and I was in the process of impounding this very one when... When I give an order, I expect full compliance. Well, I realize that, sir, but I thought you'd be pleased to know... Well, I mean, we don't want to start a nuclear war unless we have to, right? Sit down, Captain, and turn that thing off. Yes, sir. But the missiles, so surely you want to issue those recall codes immediately. The missiles are not going to be recalled. My attack orders have been issued and the orders stand. If you'll excuse me saying so, sir, that would be, well, catastrophic. If Korea were really attacking us, sir, then certainly we wouldn't be hearing music on the radio right now. Take it easy, Captain. Why don't you uh, pour me a glass of grain alcohol and rainwater and uh, help yourself to whatever you like. Sir, it is my clear duty under the present circumstances to issue the recall code. Upon my own authority and turn these missiles around. I must ask you for the key and recall code, sir. I told you to take it easy, Captain. There's nothing anybody can do about this now. I'm the only one who knows the recall code. Sir, I must insist that you give these recall codes to me. Mandrake, do you recall what Clemenzo once said about war? Sir? He said war was too important to be left to the generals. When he said that 100 years ago, he might have been right. But today, war is too important to be left to politicians. They have neither the time, the training, nor the inclination for strategic thought. I can no longer sit back and allow communist infiltration, communist subversion, and the international communist conspiracy to sap and, and purify all of our precious bodily fluids. Have you ever seen a commie drink a glass of water? No, no, I can't say that I have. Vodka, that's what they drink, never water. On no account will a commie ever drink water. Oh, uh, I don't really see what you're getting at, General. Water. That's what I'm getting at, Mandrake. Water. Water is the source of all life. Seven-tenths of this Earth's surface is water. Why? You realize that 70% of you is water, Mandrake. And as human beings, you and I need fresh, pure water to replenish our precious bodily fluids. Are you beginning to understand? Uh-huh. Mandrake. Have you ever wondered why I only drink rainwater and pure grain alcohol? Well, sometimes, maybe. Have you ever heard of something called fluoridation? That's what they put in the water, isn't it? Exactly. And don't you know who they are? The water people? Commies, Mandrake, commies. Fluoridation is the most monstrously conceived and dangerous communist plot we have ever had to face. You're, you're joking, right? Think about it, Captain. When did fluoridation first begin? 1946. No sooner did the Cold War begin than a foreign substance is introduced into our precious bodily fluids without anyone knowing or having a say about it. That's the way our diehard commie works. General, when did you first come up with this theory? I first became aware of it, Mandrake, while making love. Mm -hmm. A profound sense of fatigue, a feeling of emptiness followed. Luckily, I was able to interpret these feelings correctly as a loss of essence. Essence? I can reassure you it has not recurred, Mandrake. Woman. Women sense my power and they seek the life essence. I do not avoid women, but I do deny them my essence.